Hello there. Uh, today is the 24th of September, 2020. Today is a Thursday. You know what, for some reason I thought it was the 25th of September today. You know, I, I, I don't know how I got that idea. Sometimes we are, you know, staying up too late every day and you're crossing the 12 a.m. 12, 12 a.m. line every night. So it, it, get, it gets confusing. But anyways, it is indeed only the 24th of September. Um, I am in the lab, as you can see. Obviously, I have not been here for three days in a week. Yeah, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was uh, I was at home. Not even well, I stepped out of the apartment for twi twice in, in total for picking up the the uh, deliveries because you know I order food on a restaurant on Roosevelt Island and I um, wouldn't dare to pick up my food because I don't want to pay tips. If they deliver it to your apartment, you pay tips, right? Um, anyway, so the reason I have not been out, 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 you know, like really, really out instead of just wearing pajamas and, and going out for your, for your food is because, uh, as I've told you in the last video, my recent date blew off. Like I've been dating someone for a week no, for a month, and then she said she wanted to end things, and I didn't really take it well, very well. I caught her, and I was crying and begging, and you know, ultimately I, I gave up. But yeah, so I felt like it's I kind of owe it to myself to lay low for a few days. By lay low, I mean stay in my apartment and pretty much do nothing uh, for a few days to until I'm ready to. To pick myself up again pick myself up again yeah i thought i said it wrong <laughs> you know what i've been thinking the past three days well i've been doing other things too um but mainly thinking maybe you know i'm just not ready for a relationship maybe i'm just not ready for the things i always claim that i want like a like a stable relationship uh intimacy you know family and stuff like that you know maybe i'm just not ready because every time I rush into something, as long as someone's smart and beautiful and, you know, we can talk, you know, we can have, like, reasonable conversations, then I immediately falls in, I don't want to say falls in love, but, like, fall for her. And then imagine the wonderful life we could have together in the future. And then uh, she obviously didn't think the same way. And I keep pushing and, and eventually falls off. It's, it's like a pattern, you know. And I realized that maybe the reason for that keeps happening is because I'm not ready to have a real relationship instead of a fast you know a, like a like a speed run thing you can't speed run to intimacy you can't speed run to lifelong um, promise to each other you can't speed run to establishing a family and you know really making plans for each other for the next 50 years so maybe i'm just Having this illusion of, you know, maybe I'm only thinking about the good good part of having a relationship in the future, but ignored that we're like it, each individual. The the older they get, the the more difference they would have in each one of them. So there will be more clashes and and frenzies between them when they want to be together. And I'm not definitely not helping when I'm, you know, like buying gifts for with a girl after a date and you know want to text her and talk to her every day and you know doing all those immature stuff like that so yeah I've, I've thought this through and the conclusion is I'm not ready I am actually not at least I'm not putting enough effort on actually changing myself so because the reason she said was that oh I feel I fear that in the future when our differences arrive uh, you wouldn't be able to change for me even if i just change for for her you know on the matters of how frequent how frequent we should talk to each other on the phone or texting stuff like that anyways now i think she's right i am not ready to change myself for a relationship i always just go straight in exposing you know not exposing like um 
how to say, how, claiming that I have feelings for her or whatever and then you know pushes people away I think I'm not ready to actually change myself for the other person and that includes your behavior you, you can't you can't show that much neediness in the beginning of the relationship or whatever so yeah I'm not ready hmm I think I am I want to be but I'm not I'm only 25 years old you know I have to remind myself that sometimes the average age of people getting married nowadays especially with my level of education it's way above 30 like 32 33 maybe so if you think about it yes there, there are like abnormal cases I have people around me getting married when they're 25 24 uh, but you know if you use that against you know if I use that to persuade myself that yeah, I can do that too I'm just simply ignoring the statistics I'm, I'm I'll become one of those people I hate which is like using one or two single examples to ignore the big data you know I don't want to do that I'll have to accept the fact that there, there's a long way between now and the day I'll eventually marry someone and um, you know establish a family having that long uh, craved intimacy for a lifetime you know there's it's not something you can speed run I have to accept that and um, in the meanwhile really get to know myself and what kind of changes am I willing to make and what kind of qualities would be the red flags or you know uh, uh, what is the word for it like once you know it you can't really continue it's not red flag it's 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 like um, ice, ice, ice mountain. No, I don't know why. Like, I have to know after knowing someone. First of all, don't really fall in love with her. <laughs> no, like, don't really have that much of a strong feeling for her that fast. At least, like, hope for a month or two, right? And then try to get really get to know the other person instead of imagining her to be perfect. And um, really know what you want, what you can't, what you can't have, what you can't compromise. You know we cannot abide stuff like that yeah just just really have to accept the fact that you will still be alone for another maybe 10 years <laughs> oh my god that sounds scary oh my god that sounds really scary uh, but you know that's the reality it's it's i still don't think it's gonna be that bad but at least give you know accept the fact that it could be and you're gonna keep trying and, and all and all that, but you know, really accept the fact that relationship and romance is a hard thing. To, you know, it's not even something you would eventually get. Some people don't get romance and relation and, and love for the entirety of their life. They just find someone who's tired of waiting and finding, and then they get together and then you know, just just live together instead of really having connection. Anyways, uh, that's that's one thing I wanted to say in the beginning of the video. Mm, just realize that I'm really bad in this and there's a long wait statistically, especially on me. And I'm gonna accept that while I'll keep fighting, okay? Do not, like from now on, dating is a almost guaranteed failure for at least a while. <laughs> Uh, you know, like, uh, I'm not gonna just be one of those losers and, and you know, defeatist. I would say, oh, uh, it's, I've, I've been through too much and, uh, you know, I, I, it never ends well for me. I'm just, I'm just gonna give up for a while. I'm not gonna do that. Like, of course, you know, it's still gonna, that's probably what's gonna happen to me. But, mm, I'm gonna keep fighting was full of hope and was the realization that this is going to be a long haul <laughs> okay dating and finding the one is well it's one thing to worth living for right I and mean, after that it's going to be like oh, one less thing to worry about but also one less thing to to be worth fighting about so i don't know at least I have that going you know the possibility the hope that I'll have a much better life in the future than I'm right now because now it's miserable. It's like, especially with COVID hitting, I can go ahead and not talk to someone for a week 
<laughs> because you know nobody's in the lab and um, nobody's like hmm. yeah it's just horrible okay anyway i've done for that part um so while i was being miserable because of my dating uh, miserable dating life i have missed like i didn't really talk about something important in the last video which is i think it was last saturday or or friday last friday wait anyway so justice ruth Bader kingsburg passed away not that long ago I, you know let me, let me just google um okay justice Ms. Peter Ginsburg passed away on September the 18th, 18th, which is, excuse me, on last Friday. Okay. So, um, for those of you who doesn't know who that is, let me just read the, the introduction on Wikipedia. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an American justice who served as a associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1993 until her death in 2020, so 27 years. She was nominated by President Bill Clinton and was generally viewed as a moderate judge who was a con consensus builder at the time of nomination. So, yeah. Uh, if you happen to have time to watch one of those documentaries or, you know, uh, articles, you, you, you will be able to find out that she's a wonderful human being. Um, I don't really want to go too much detail on that because I don't really know that much about her to be honest and also um, you know it's not really what I'm good at but I, I do want to like, okay so what happens usually after a retirement or a mm, death of a Supreme Court justice would be um, another one need to be filled right so how it works in the in the so there, there are three branches in the American um, uh, democracy system or whatever. So there's the government leading by the president who is, you know, elected by, by the people, by the general election, electoral college and whatnot. And then there's Congress, uh, the Senate and the Congress. They're like responsible for making the laws. The president and the, the government is pretty much responsible for executive, executing like ex executing the laws yeah sorry and uh you know the congress congressmen senators are also elected by the people um by their respective states and then there is the supreme court supreme court what what i'm just going on why why is my word why is the same word so hard for me today anyways uh, so the supreme, uh, the supreme court is consisted of nine justices and uh, they're responsible for you know viewing cases and see if they're against the constitution and pretty much make judgments on those cases and those three branches um, they help each other they limit each other it's like um it's a pretty pretty good system at least that's what the western people think of it um, like they've been using that system to to prey on us by us i mean the chinese people for years it's like ah your system sucks we have a really good free french system blah 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 <clears throat> and um so currently wait so before justice uh, kingsburg passed away there there has been a um because donald trump nominated two uh conservative judges already so right now it's like five against four conservative liberal or conservative liberal uh, moderate you know and then Wait, yeah, it's four. Uh, it's five to four already. So if uh, after after uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, if Donald Trump was able to nominate another one before the end of his term, or even you know he won the, uh, the general election in November and then gets to nominate one anyway, there will be a six to three uh, conservative, uh, you know, moderate liberal ratio, which is like too lopsided. If you think about it, they, the the conservative power and the and the Supreme Court will be too much. You would have cases, you know, going to the Supreme Court and they immediately get shut down. For example, Medicare for all, 
they will say, oh, it's not constitutional. Even if you passed it, I'm not going to make it, you know, valid, you know, for uh, gay marriage, maybe turn over for abortions, you know, stuff like that. So it's a really, really important job. And even even though in back in 2016, um, it was then a, a Republican controlled Senate, which, you know, pretty much denied Barack Obama's nomination for uh, I forgot the name of the justice of the potential justice at the time. The reason they used was, well, it's too close to an election. Uh, we should let the next president to choose the nominee uh, to choose the, uh, the next, you know, Supreme Court justice because you know it would be the people's choice. So you can't nominate someone too close to the election. That was nine months before the fucking election. Now there has been six weeks. Oh, by the way, there has been a lot of Republican senators like uh, Lindsey Graham, like uh, Mitch McConnell, like uh, Ted Cruz, you know, went out on record, saying on record that it shouldn't happen because of that reason I just said. And now it has, there's six weeks left until the election. And what do you think? Well, <laughs> they're just eating their own words, of course, um, because, you know, I can understand that. Actually, if they don't do that, I would think they're stupid because you know, nominating someone into the uh, Supreme Court is actually their in, is actually a huge interest to everybody. Conservative people want to have a conservative judges in the court, and liberal people want to have liberal judges in the court. So, it's not you know they would use any excuses to keep Obama from nominating someone um, when they're you know in charge of the Senate. So. They can do that. And now they're still in charge of the Senate. I think it's 53 Republicans to 47 Democrats. So that's a pretty big lead if you think about it. They can afford to lose two votes, which is pretty much what the media is predicting now. Two people, I forgot exactly who, are probably not going to vote for the potential nominee. Um, but that's that's the case, you know. You can't really blame them for being hypocrites because, you know, they have they have the numbers, they have the power, they just need some reason okay would you really rather um would you really like it better when for example four years ago the republicans just came out and say hey we don't want another judge nominated by obama so we're gonna we're gonna filibuster this anyway and not even give you a palatable reason do you really want that so what i'm saying is um it's gonna happen anyway so the average time uh, it takes for a judge to be nominated and then confirmed in the Supreme, Supreme Court is like 70 days, I think. So with now being six weeks, so like 40 days, merely a half of that, um, there's a chance that it doesn't go through. And if the process in, is in the middle of, you know, being confirmed and then on November, uh, Donald Trump loss, uh, loses, <laughs> and then we have a really good shit show to, to watch on what exactly is going to happen. So, yeah, a lot of people's minds are in this. It's like, um, no disrespect to the late Justice uh, Beta Ginsburg, but her death meant more than just we were losing someone who's really wonderful and who's really terrific. And, um, uh, but also the weight her position carries especially in the specific timing of right now it's just more than that okay so in the end um okay that you know the passing of uh justice beta ginsburg is pretty much the only big news in in, in the past few days oh also yeah also um i think it was someone a 26 yeah a 26 years old woman named brianna taylor was shot back in March um, by a police and the grand jury of that police is not uh, not like pursuing any charges so there has been riots and protests on multiple cities today um, but you know I don't really have I don't really want to talk about like black people getting mistreated and you know there have been protests because of that it's, it's you know I'm biased against, like, for example, why is every single case where the black people is being mistreated have some bad qualities on the black people? Like, do you even have one case 
where it's a, oh yeah, there's one case. There's that, that guy uh, in his home and a cop uh, breaks in because she thought it was her home. And then she thought, you know, there's someone in her apartment and she's shot the guy. You know, that, that was such a tragic. Uh, I can understand how, you know, but I don't think race plays a card in that because if she, if it's someone else's apartment that cop breaks in, she would probably think, well, I got shot, I got shoot that person too. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter if it's a black person. So my point is why are all the race related discrimination cases, you know, the black people in that case have some kind of, you know, I don't want to use the word bad quality, but like some kind of uh, flaws, you know, either using drugs or having um, arrest records or, you know, being convicted before or being on drugs or, you know, uh, uh, refuse to follow what the placement's orders or, you know, like, obviously those are not the reason that someone should be shot and killed. And I understand the, um, the, the, I understand the reason that people need to go on the streets and protest and whatnot, but you know, try to try to think yourself as a police person. You know, your life is on the line every single day, and your your nerve is on. You know, it's it's on the line every single day because of the potential danger of your job. And wouldn't you pay a little bit more attention when? Um, when 13% of the American, uh, African American people committed 60% of the crimes, of course, there's ju you know, um, a, a criminal ju justice system bias in that, but that's like a five times more than average, right? I don't know. Maybe my math is not wrong, not right on that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Mm, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't really have an opinion on that. I'm just. I don't know what the right solution is. Um, anyways, maybe I will voice my, uh, who knows. Okay. Yeah, there's one more thing I want to share um, before I uh, finish this video, which is that I, I was watching on YouTube, like stuff about the Justice uh, Ginsburg's past you know, because she passed away recently and there has been a lot of, you know, old videos involving her getting recommended to people uh, these few days. For example, I was watching this one two years ago when she was doing an interview with um, with uh, Stephen Colbert. So Stephen Colbert is a, is a host of the, the Late Show or, you know, the, the, the names of those shows are so similar. Late Show, Late Night with someone the Today Show, The Daily Show, The Last Week Tonight, blah, 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 you know. Anyways, so one thing really gets me is that when um, Colbert asked Ginsburg, is a hot dog a sandwich? Now that's obviously a softball or, you know, some fun conversation you can have with someone. But Ginsburg said, Justice Ginsburg said, well, give me the definition of a sandwich, then I'll tell you if a hot dog is a, is a sandwich. And that immediately gets me, <laughs> you know, like, oh my God, it's, it's at the moment I thought to myself, oh my God, that's what all conversations should, should, uh, should happen. You know, just, okay, not all conversations. For example, um, let's, let's say um, all serious or half serious conversations should happen. Because if, if someone said, hey, uh, my lunch was pretty good, and you say, oh, give me the, the standard of, of pretty good, what's pretty good to you, then you'd be stupid. And you're like, what, what, are you, are you serious? So, you know, that kind of conversation is aside. All the other conversations should be like that, you know. Give me the definition of the things you're gonna argue, then we have to, then we can talk, you know. If when, you know, before concepts and definitions and common grounds can be found in a conversation, in an argument. All the other discussions are meaningless, are are moot, are, what's that? are moot. Yeah, all right. So, it it just gets me. I mean, I may, 
I, you know what, I just realized I might be a little sexist. Because one of the reasons it gets me is that, wow, a woman can be that sharp and that, uh, you know, just that good on making an argument. I feel like it would be a little bit less surprising when it is a man making that same argument. So maybe I need to start appreciating um, women the same way as I'm appreciating men on their intellect intellectual levels. I know I keep saying that I like someone who is smart and beautiful, but that's more of a you know beautiful comes first. I can accept someone who is beautiful and dumb, but I cannot accept someone who is smart and not you know and ugly. Yeah, I'm, I know I, I am a sexist, at least deep down in in my heart, uh, and that's bad because that's one of the things I genuinely want to change about myself. Mm. Yeah, anyways, that's probably too much already. Uh, what time is it? 10.30? I might have to go home really soon. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace out. I can do this, right? Live long, prosper.